life and support for their families. A not-for-profit community hospice. H-O-B dot org. From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. Protesters are rallying across the country, including right here in Arizona, demanding more witnesses be allowed to testify in the impeachment proceedings. Plus, a group of lawmakers on a mission to ban discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity in our state. And the efforts underway right now to give inmates a second chance at a better life after serving time behind bars. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Jamie Landers. And I'm Julian Paras. Thanks for joining us. U.S. Senators today continue to question lawyers in the impeachment trial of President Donald Trump. But last night, hundreds of activists gathered outside of U.S. Senators' offices from Washington, D.C. to Phoenix to call for a fair impeachment trial. Cronkite News reporter Caroline Lynch was at the rally in Phoenix, and she joins us now. About 100 Arizona activists took to the sidewalks out front of Senator Martha McSally's office last night. The group called for McSally to vote to allow more witnesses and to include crucial documents in the impeachment trial. What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! I felt it was my civic duty as a citizen of the United States of America to come out here and let my senator, McSally, know that it is her duty to uphold the Constitution. Susan Harmon joined others, eager to share their opinions about the trial through signs, and also encouraged cars to honk in support to allow witnesses. I think this is just an opportunity for, for our leaders in Washington to understand that voters are unhappy and they're angry with the, the political games that are being played. And it's time to just recognize that they took an oath of office and that they need to represent America and American ideals and stand up for what's right. And that, that is true. Similar protests also took place in Washington, D.C., Anchorage, Alaska, and Salt Lake City. There's just one more day left until the Senate decides whether to allow more witnesses and documents. In the studio, I'm Caroline Lynch, Cronkite News. Republican Senator Martha McSally has expressed her own concerns with the impeachment hearings. Yesterday, she tweeted, I've heard enough. Time to vote. McSally has asked several questions as well, including one about whether or not the articles of impeachment charge the president with bribery, extortion, or anything similar. The president's counsel said they did not. As for Democratic Senator Kirsten Sinema, she broke her silence about the impeachment proceedings, asking her first question yesterday. Take a listen. The question from Senator Sinema to the president's counsel is this. The administration notified Congress of the hold of Northern Triangle Country's funds in March 2019, announced its decision to withhold aid to Afghanistan in September 2019, and worked with Congress for months in 2018 regarding funds being withheld due to Pakistan's lack of progress meeting its counterterrorism responsibilities. In these instances, the, re <coughs> excuse me, the receiving countries knew the funds were being withheld to change behavior and further publicly stated American policy. Why, when the administration withheld the Ukrainian security assistance, did it not notify Congress or make Ukraine or partner countries publicly aware of the hold and the steps needed to resolve the hold. Yesterday, we asked, if allowed, who do you think should be called as a witness in the impeachment hearings and why? Samuel disagrees, saying, should be no witnesses. They had their chance to call witnesses. Maria posted, anybody who can tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help them God. It's not too late to join the heated debate. Go to our Cronkite News Facebook page to put in your response. Also developing now, local lawmakers and community leaders want the state to ban discrimination in housing and jobs based on sexual orientation and gender identity. I spoke with supporters who say an anti-discrimination law would draw national attention and money to Arizona. Bipartisan supporters of an anti-discrimination bill say the rights of LGBTQ residents need to be recognized on the state level. As a queer Asian American woman, 
I needed a safe space in Arizona in order to be authentic, to feel like I can live my truth. Some Arizona cities ban jobs and housing based on sexual orientation and gender identity. Scottsdale Councilwoman Virginia Corte says it's time for a statewide solution. Our rights should depend on zip codes. Nobody should have to fear they lose rights and their dignity. Senate Bill 1321 would protect gay and transgender Arizonans in housing, employment, and other public accommodations. Neil Giuliano says that will strengthen the state's economy. As our economy continues to expand and more and more jobs come to our state with larger, strong brand organizations. Those larger, strong brand organizations have non-discrimination policies. They will look to locate in areas that share their values and share their views. But not everyone is on board. The Center for Arizona Policy says the proponents of the bill, quote, offer a solution where there is no problem and create major constitutional dilemmas for a vast number of Arizonans who do not conform to proponents' viewpoints, end quote. Alexa Rio says she expects obstacles, but won't give up. Uh, recognizing the realities of Arizona, it is going to be a lot more work. It may not be done tomorrow, may not be done with a couple months, but it will be done just because of the determination of the people. Uh, to be able to live their true selves is always going to be more powerful than any other legislation that will push us down. Supporters of a state anti-discrimination law have tried and failed in at least one previous legislative session. The bill is early in the process, having just been introduced to the Senate. Another proposed bill in Arizona gaining national attention would ban transgender females from playing women's sports in school. The Save Women's Sports Act would require interscholastic and intramural sports to designate teams based on what the bill calls biological sex. The bill proposed by Representative Nancy Bartow would require a doctor's note to prove a person is a female if their birth certificate is disputed. The goal of this bill is to prevent biologically female students from having to compete against biological males. Right now, there are 22 other Republican co-sponsors on the bill, but several women's and sports organizations are pushing back against the measure. So we want to hear from you. Should the state legislature pass this bill? Right now, about 60 percent of you say no. There's still some time to vote in our live interactive poll. Just go to our Cronkite Twitter feed to weigh in. New tonight, activists are fighting for reforms to an Arizona prison system they say is focused on punishment rather than redemption. Cronkite News reporter Christian Sita talks to advocates who say a clean slate for the formerly incarcerated could lead to a better life outside of prison bars. Prison reform advocates call the Reframing Justice Project a better way to improve society. Supporters spoke at a recent rally at the state capitol. Michael Perino says his son was sentenced to nearly two years in prison for taking a family member's car. Once in prison and after prison, he didn't get the help he needed to stay successful. Supporters like Perino want Arizona lawmakers to drop mandatory sentencing for nonviolent crimes and offer more help to people after they get out of prison. Models of justice that are rooted in punishment and move them towards one that embrace radical community making and healing. He opposes House Bill 2036 that sets mandatory minimum sentences for people who use or sell illegal drugs. Mandatory minimums are not good. They remove uh, the decision making from the judge. Timothy Pena says the Arizona legislators should pass bills that reward a prisoner who works to improve their situation while serving in prison. The bills that I'd like to see passed are the standard early release Bills. Pena says many people pay the price of prisons. It's not just for the uh, uh, person that's incarcerated, but for uh, families and friends, uh, outrageous cost to the taxpayers. The revolving door of prison can come to a stop. Perino says his son returned to a prison a second time. He is now outside of prison walls. Perino is working with groups like American Friends Service Committee to make sure others receive help. House Bill 2036, the mandatory sentencing bill for opioids and other drugs, it's making its way through the House. Live in the broadcast center, Christian Sita, Cronkite News. 
Coming up next on Cronkite News at 5, life-saving drones. We'll tell you how the high-tech equipment is helping out with search and rescues. And learning to cook with diabetes isn't always easy, but one class is helping to make it simple and fun. speaking division of Cronkite News, covering topics such as economics, education, sustainability, immigration, and border relations. Cronkite Noticias strives to serve the Spanish-speaking community in Arizona. Under the guidance of prominent Spanish-speaking professionals, students at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism develop content for our broadcast partner, Univision, as well as on Facebook and Twitter. Explore Cronkite Noticias at cronkitenoticias.azpbs.org. With wildfires, a scarcity of water, and other environmental issues facing the Earth today, it's critical to stay up to date with local impacts of a changing climate. That's why we created Elemental, covering sustainability, a multimedia collaboration between public television and radio stations. From climate change to water conservation to renewable energy and much more, Elemental covers the latest in sustainability news. Find our stories on our website, elementalreports.com. A new report from the CDC found a decline in drug overdose deaths in the United States from 2017 to 2018. In 2018, the report found over 67,000 drug overdose deaths in the U.S. That's a 4.1% decline from 2017. And for both years, overdose death rates were higher for males than females. The report also found an increase in the rate of drug overdose deaths involving synthetic opioids like fentanyl, which increased by 10%. Now, check this next story out. ASU is using drones to help advance the way search and rescues are performed. The drones and robots could deliver life-saving equipment and even track a missing person through their movement. And thanks to their programming, they would be able to cover large areas as well. The Arizona Attorney General's office is donating money to organizations that provide health resources to first responders. The goal is to help firefighters and police officers who are suffering with depression, PTSD, and other disorders. The Attorney General's Office will give $400,000 in grants uh, to organizations that provide mental health resources and training to first responders. Native Americans face the highest rates of diabetes in the nation, with statistics showing that more than 15% have been diagnosed with the disease. Cronkite News reporter Jordan Elder found out how one Phoenix organization is working to change that. Native Health wants to teach adults how to deal with diabetes. And you won't need a pencil for this class, but you do need to bring your appetite. Has anyone used the apple slicer before? Might take a little bit of practice. I know a lot of people in the Native American community and in the Phoenix community, they get diagnosed with diabetes, um, but aren't necessarily educated on it. But this class is getting educated, and it's not your typical lecture hall. You could always try smoothies. Having this class, it helps them become educated, find out what diabetes is, what kind of foods they can eat with diabetes, what can help them for their overall health. This free 20-week course is open to anyone. Smith demonstrates a healthy, simple, and cost-effective meal. And best of all, it's diabetes-friendly. Thank you. Today, the group made this healthy chicken Waldorf salad. And as they leave, everyone gets their own to-go bag full of ingredients so that they can make this salad at home by themselves. Being diabetic is very expensive. And so this is a plus that they give us and very helpful that we get what we need to make our dinners tonight. Diabetics have to be careful with what they eat in order to maintain their blood sugar levels. Usually this means eating more fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. 
These are much more expensive than chips, which used to be Glorine Barton's favorite snack. It would be very helpful to a lot of people that are going through this to come here. It would really, because a lot of people don't know how to deal with their diabetes. Living with diabetes may not be easy, but the Food for Thought program is showing people that it's possible. Oh, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. And it can taste good. Native Health also offers transportation to these classes to make them more accessible, and there's always a dietitian on hand to answer questions. Live in the Broadcast Center, Jordan Elder, Cronkite News. The, the Valley isn't known for having great air quality, but a new state program could help change that. We'll tell you how the program plans to tackle that problem when we come back. By the year 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Before Professor Halden, I had an insane amount of passion, but I almost felt helpless because I didn't know how to use it. Professor Halden gave me a chance to make a difference. Being at a place like ASU allows you to take these big leaps. Ultimately, the biggest problems in the world cannot be solved alone. As journalists at Cronkite News, we report on stories that matter to you by focusing on the local impact. We dig deeper and work tirelessly to keep you informed. Live in Wickerburg. Live in Los Angeles. In Cleveland. In Washington. In Louisville. From Jerusalem. Live in Philadelphia. From around the world to right here in Phoenix. At Cronkite News, we report the facts and stick to the truth. Phoenix residents can breathe a little easier. The city is using EPA grant money to help reduce emissions and improve air quality. Cronkite News reporter Madison Staten explains how the money will be used. The city plans to use the grant to swap out some of the city's big diesel trucks with more environmentally friendly ones. Already, the city has replaced more than 150 trucks with natural gas vehicles. And now, city leaders hope this grant will be just the start of funding future trucks. Our residents deserve clean air, and the city of Phoenix is continuing to seek out innovative opportunities and solutions. That's why the city is investing in nine additional solid waste trucks and one long haul vehicle. These trucks aren't ordinary. We were able to replace 10 older diesel trucks with ultra low emission, ultra low NOx emission trucks. These trucks come through a $1 million grant from the EPA's Diesel Emission Reduction Act program. EPA Regional Administrator Mike Stoker says the investment is key to improving air quality. Phoenix area, it's estimated that about 50 to 60 percent of their air emissions come from those trucks. Um, they can't control those emissions. EPA can nationally. 48.4 tons of carbon dioxide and 1.8 tons of nitrogen will be cut over lifetime use of these vehicles. This saves our taxpayers dollars as well as reducing emissions in our community. So cleaner air and dollars saved. For Councilman Carlos Garcia, the trucks represent a shift toward a brighter future. South of I-17, our life expectancy is 10 years less than the rest of the city. So to make these changes and be able to walk the walk and assure that city vehicles are, have low emissions is really important for our families. The new trucks will be ordered next month. Residents can expect these trucks on routes in March of 2021. In the studio, Madison Staten, Cronkite News. Self-driving UPS minivans are coming to the Valley. Waymo announced it's using autonomous Chrysler Pacifica minivans to deliver packages from locations in Phoenix to a UPS sorting location in Tempe. A driver will still be on board the van to monitor and intervene if needed. The tests are starting in the next couple of weeks and will last for several months. Although the number of packages that are planned on being shipped during this time has not been revealed, this service will not deliver packages to people's doorsteps. With worries about how this technology is replacing jobs, UPS says they're looking at autonomous technologies to complement its human workers. 
All right, so hopefully here in Arizona, these vans are not going to have to worry about snow, but what <laughs> kind of weather would they be looking at? No, definitely not have to worry about snow, especially here. As many of us already know, Arizona is known for its great weather, especially around this time of year. So I'll start by showing y'all the current temperatures. This is coming in from Phoenix Sky Harbor right now, where it is 66. The dew point and humidity are quite low, so obviously it'll be pretty pleasant once you step outside and experience that weather. <sighs> Uh, so that's coming in with the six south six mile per hour winds uh, going on to this evening. There will be mostly clear. Obviously temperatures will drop as the sun starts to set, which is set for about 557 um, as you go on throughout the night. The temperatures will plummet. So if you have any evening plans later for tonight, you might want to have a light coat or jacket handy because those temperatures will get pretty chilly outside. And as many of you already heard the Phoenix Open teed off the first round today and tomorrow it's going to look like more beautiful weather for golf but if you get up with the early birds at seven uh, the weather will be 47 degrees outside but that will climb up to 70 by 3 p.m. so it should be pretty pleasant going to highs across the state there's 73 in Hilla Bend 73 in Phoenix 48 Window Rock and 77 in Yuma and we'll end with the eight day forecast this weekend's looking like a beauty and this week actually the temperatures will drop. It'll be pretty chilly on Monday with a high 58, but that will climb back up to 69 on Friday. From the Cronkite Weather Center, I'm CJ Chaitis. A heartwarming reunion. One year ago, golfer Gary Woodland and Amy Bockerstedy's meeting went viral at the Waste Management Phoenix Open when the Special Olympics athlete scored a par three on the infamously challenging 16th hole. This year, the pair reunited to celebrate Amy Bockerstedy's foundation, I Got This which supports golfers with Down syndrome. After the break, a story you don't want to miss. We'll introduce you to a Valley business that makes field trips more affordable for all families. Stick around. By the year 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Before Professor Halden, I had an insane amount of passion, but I almost felt helpless because I didn't know how to use it. Professor Halden gave me a chance to make a difference. Being at a place like ASU allows you to take these big leaps. Ultimately, the biggest problems in the world cannot be solved alone. As journalists at Cronkite News, we report on stories that matter to you by focusing on the local impact. We dig deeper and work tirelessly to keep you informed. Live in Wickerburg. Live in Los Angeles. In Cleveland. In Washington. In Louisville. From Jerusalem. Live in Philadelphia. From around the world to right here in Phoenix. At Cronkite News, we report the facts and stick to the truth. A new Valley business is working to lower the cost of field trips while still providing kids in grades K through six with educational hands-on experiences. Crockart News reporter Delaney White has more on the business. Delaney. Though some school budgets are decreasing, a Phoenix couple is working to keep field trips alive in Maricopa County. My teacher said that we are going to have a field trip that comes to us. So today he took us over here and now we're doing all this stuff. Steve and Christine Cohen started Arizona Mobile Education, a field trip that goes to different schools in order to lower the cost of transportation while still providing children with educational, hands-on experiences. Steve gives credit for the idea to Christine. She spent a lot of time in the classroom with our three kids that grew up in the um, Maricopa County public school system. Um, she spent some time kind of as a room mom and she also did some substitute teaching um, quite a bit. Um, and just kind of through her experience in the classroom noticed that um, we felt that the kids could use a lot more hands-on experiences. Since transportation isn't a factor, the cost of an Arizona mobile education field trip is only about 50% of what a traditional field trip costs. It is approximately nine 10 or $11 per student, depending on the learning module selected. Its lesson plans are focused on students in kindergarten through sixth grade, and their educational programs include science, math, social studies, and vocabulary in topics relating to Arizona. 
Yeah, so basically what we're teaching them is the five C's of Arizona um, and also Arizona state history and state symbols. Um, and the teachers also get to pick from 11 different learning modules, so we can go into a little bit more detail on any one of those areas, whichever the teachers pick, whatever going on in their classroom at that particular time. When asked about their favorite part of the field trip, students most enjoyed the hands-on activities. Um, I haven't done all of the stuff, but my favorite thing is planting seeds and stuff because we have more and more stuff to plant. And I really like trees. Well, the results that we've had are amazing. I mean, I think you've seen a lot of the reaction of the kids so far. Um, we've done about 20 of these events over the last two years, and the response has been nothing but great. Um, the kids have a great time. Uh, the teachers believe that we're providing an invaluable service. The kids are loving this. Yeah, I'm hoping that I'll get it again. Arizona Mobile Education covers all schools in Maricopa County, including public, private, and charter. In Phoenix, Delaney White, Cronkite News. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Here's what's coming up on Arizona Horizon and PBS NewsHour. On the next Arizona Horizon, we'll get impressions from Maricopa County's annual homeless count, which was conducted this week. And it's the dead of winter, but Valley, Arizona is set to perform a midsummer night's dream. On the next Arizona Horizon. I'm Judy Woodruff. Tonight on the news, our senators question the prosecution and defense in the impeachment trial of President Trump. Coming up after Cronkite News and Arizona Horizon. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Mark Tarbell. Join me for the season premiere of Platon Poor. This week, we'll go to downtown Phoenix to see what's at the Churchill. Get some southern comfort at Welcome Diner. And check out what's on the shelf at Hidden Track Bottle Shop. All this and more, so don't miss the season premiere of Platon Poor. Tonight at 7, only on Arizona PBS. I'm Alberto Rios. Join me on the next Art in the 48th. Together, we'll explore the arts right here in Arizona with the people who are creating art and sharing it too. So look around your community. Art is everywhere. Art in the 48th, tonight at 7.30, only on Arizona PBS. Explore new ideas and new worlds here on Arizona PBS, a community service of Arizona State University. Our year-to-year -year donations are, are 